Claudia Cecita, and this is Sarona Sanarini, Chapter 2, Part 3. He asks, What will you have me do? Go see the Lady of the Lake and ask her to give, me my, to give you my flute and robes. He departed after hearing my command, and when he left, I stayed the rest of the night awake, and around dawn, I rose from my bed, and I tried to fiddle with my new body a little more. I tried stretching and running and lifting a few household items. It would still be a while before the rest of the family would wake up. And remembering my role to play, I went back to pretending to be asleep, and the original Alini always had problems waking up. Oh my god, like, the chapter was almost over. Hmm. Uh, maybe I'll read a little bit of chapter three and then just call it and then just call the chapter two still. Mm -hmm. After much practice I was able to act by the Riona Lini and her expression and her emotions, thoughts, dreams and mannerisms were my own. And my acting was so believable that no one was none the wiser and the only one that was not that was in on the joke was my assassin. And after several weeks he returned with the promised good. And like I had expected, the odds had the idols appraised, and he could, and he told me this himself when he returned. By now he had figured out that I could read minds. Coincidentally, he assumed that I was able to manipulate the thoughts of others. He figured that it was futile to lie to me, or to even to resist me. I decided not to be too hard on him, considering that he was going to die soon. This assertion left him uneasy from what I had overheard. My assassin was either going to lose his life or disappear. Now the option humor the killer one bit. And for now, his best option for survival was to go to the outside world. The problem was that he had never gone outside the open forest. He did not know, he did not know the ways of his people. It is ironic after taking so many lives and now I am begging a stranger for salvation, said my assassin. We are the one we must to survive and for now we wait. Worried the assassin, I said, worried the assassin started to depart and I detained him before he leaped out the window and I could see his sad eyes shimmering in the, dar chir in the darkness and despite all he had done I could not help but feel pity for him. I promise I will get you out of this mess, old geezer. He gave me a sad smile and then he departed. And I could have this current his figure being swallowed by the darkness and everything, and everything was silent when he left. And I wonder for how long I could, I could delay rejoining the old society. And for a month, I faced a trauma to keep myself from performing my daily duties. And my mother spoiled me all the while. As for my father, he was completely indifferent to the entire events. In the darkness I bathed away the silence by playing my flute, and Aline never learned how to play an instrument or to dance, and she liked the proper focus and coordination to master even the most rudimentary instrument. And aside from her singing, Nalini had no talent whatsoever, and she was terrible at sewing, magic, lore, fireware, razor, heck, everything that was necessary to be a proper elf lady. All those things would have been forgiven if only she had good memory, and everything an elf does had a religious connotation, and flaws and individuality were sinful. And the only reason that Nalini had kept her life was because Grimir fancied her. Her special treatment had made all of the other elves jealous, and it was a miracle she had managed to survive to her 30th birthday without an assassination attempt. While I played my flute, I saw much of Nalini's light, and her memories did not shed any light to what the elves meant by light, and I resolved to ask my assassin about what was the elf's light. And the next day I had an unpleasant dinner with my fa with my father, with my elf father, and I was awakened early by my maid LaDonna, and she dressed me in a white dress and I was to wear to return to formal society, and before then I used to stroll about in a cute pink dress with many ribbons, and it was an export that Vermeer had somehow acquired. Heck, most of the things I own belong to the outside world. And my room was an exact replica of the female of the female wind in Grimmel's tower. The only difference was the second wardrobe filled with white elf robes. And when Adonna finished dressing me, she escorted me to the dining hall. And the dining hall was located in the open square garden in the middle of the mansion. And at the center of the garden there was a marble table raised a few steps. And the cushion chairs were occupied. And despite being morning, the table had nearly had nearby four golden platters filled with burning oil. And the light emitted from those platters lamps symbolized the light of the family. And it was customary that those flames should always be fed and never go out. Should the flame die, it would signify that the light of the entire family was gone. Alright, well, that's the end of chapter 2. Bye-bye,